Sunday, or I hope he gets bedded in front of the Senate, our dear Carlos Trujillo, a very young man with a tremendous future. Thank you very much because you have selected those people, and I assure you they will be eternally loyal to you, and they have your back. I assure you of that. Now, my story is very simple. Um, we always talk about socialism. Socialism is nothing but communism during Halloween. There's no such a thing as socialism. America has always been the most socialist country in the world. We're definitely the most generous. Look at the people in this table. Look at our backgrounds. Just think that in 1961, as a 13-year-old, by myself, in my way to Spain, I wasn't even coming here. I arrived in this great country, and almost 60 years later, I'm sitting next to the President of the United States, talking about the American dream, the only country in the world no other country in the world that you can start a business from the trunk of your car and within a very few years with hard work, commitment, and all the core values that we learn from this very culture of ours, we can become very important to our future. We can become those people who make the next generation better than the one before. This is the only country. Why do you think you had to close the borders? Because everybody in the world wants to come over here. Nobody's ever forced to come over here. We come over here, in my case, because my parents chose that I would not be indoctrinated by the communist country, by the totalitarian country, by the totalitarian regime. They don't educate children. Absolutely not. And this is something that we need to understand. What is happening in our backyard today, I experience as an 11-year-old I remember vividly all the promises that a guy named Castro gave on how 99% of the people swallow the pill. It took many years later after I read somebody named Saul Alinsky that I realized that all those people were nothing but useful idiots. I remember Castro while in the mountains being interviewed and asked if he was a communist. He went crazy. I dare you, he says. Catolico, apostolico, romano. I'm a Roman Catholic. Educated by the Jesuits, he was. How dare you? We even have a priest in the mountains. We used to have a priest in the mountains. I remember, I was the Marys brothers, Christopher Columbus here, for those of you know. And I remember the brothers, the Marys brothers, used to send young kids to the mountains because it was the second coming of our Lord. He was going to save Cuba. I remember how he promised to the farmers, to the Guajiros, that you're going to own the land. I remember all the promises that we hear today about free education and free health care and free land. And my God, no freedom. But he never said that until after he was in power, got rid of all the police, got rid of all the military been there for the last 60 years, I'm counting. And he destroyed each and every one who helped him. 
the Catholic Church. Everybody. And what do I know that? Because I happened to come to this country with the very last nine cloister nuns from Convento Santa Clara because he had taken over the convent. And I was on my way to Spain. I wasn't even coming here because I was going to join my brother, who my parents had already sent a few months before because he was in the age where the government will take him for indoctrination purposes. My dad who had experienced the same thing coming from Spain at the turn of the century, running away, not from socialism, communism. He knew better. I remember when he used to tell my mom, Fefa, this SOB is a communist. My mother says, look, how can you say that? He's Catholic. Look, he's worse. He's got a rosary beads all over his neck. It just so happened that when I was in my way to Spain to meet my brother, I was going to go to the Marys Brothers in La Coruña, España. Same brothers here at Christopher Columbus, by the way. My brother died. And I was kept in this country. Greatest blessing I ever had. But imagine what happened to mom and dad. One day, you lose both kids. This is a family who had never been involved in politics. My father came at age 18 from Spain, running from communists. By himself, never went back. After a long, long life of sacrifice, when he was about to enjoy the fruit of his labors, just like a president that is helping us today, because he could have been just having a good time, one of his many beautiful golf courses, I know. But yet he gave up enjoying the fruit of his labors to do this. So did my dad, that's why I love you. Exactly the same. So when they're about to do that, from one day to the next, they end up in this country with the shirt that he was wearing on his back and did a maximum. I've been here already four years. But thank God for Pedro Pan. Talking about socialism, Catholic Church, 14,000 kids who came like me in this country without parents. And we were provided an opportunity. This is what makes our country great. They didn't give me free nothing. They gave me the opportunity. That is the most valuable thing in the world. Now, when I said they didn't give me any free something, please understand that at 13 years old, I had to be provided with a home. I had to be provided with food and an education. That is socialism. That's Americanism. That's the America that these people are trying to destroy today by using funny terms like socialism. They're not. They're communist. Don't ever forget that. I know our president understands that because he knows. He's been all over the world and you're surrounded with great people, very loyal people. And we have our back. I remember the first time I gave little speech about something like this, we tell him about, I came from Cuba and all, blah, blah, blah. I remember this is around October 2016. I thought you were a little crazy for the sacrifice you were about to take, but I predicted that we we're gonna elect you in November and I was gonna see you in the White House in January. Thank you very much. Uh, because of the situations right now, I cannot give you a hug otherwise. Thank you very much. And I want to leave you with one last thing. Never forget about my dad, who only had a sixth grade education, but I think he was the greatest philosopher I ever met. He used to tell us how lucky he was because he was able to come from Spain to Cuba. And then he came from Cuba to the United States. 
and he saw me graduate from college, and that was the biggest prize he ever had. And he said, don't lose this place because you're not going to be as lucky as me. Because if you lose this place, you have no place to go. So with that, please keep that in mind. And please, people, explain that to our young people who are demonstrating out there. Don't be useful idiots. Please understand what's happening in our country. See what happens to our parents and see what is happening to America today. Mr. President, thank you very much. Thank and you. thank you for your hard work. Thank you very much. And he became one of the most successful men in Florida. So he did. That's the only thing he didn't say. But he did, and he's a great gentleman. Thank you very much. That's very nice. And now that you've cut everyone else down to about one minute, we appreciate that. Okay. Do you mind? Okay, I asked that. Let's go. I asked that, and you, you know. Okay. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. President. You. My name is Lourdes Subieta, and I've been working in the media for over 25 years in Venezuela, Latin America, and the U.S. And I mean, I'm an immigrant and uh, the victim of socialism, not once but twice. I was born in Venezuela to exiled Cuban parents who escaped the Castro communist tyranny and made a very successful life in other times, prosperous, but always generous Venezuela. For every single Venezuelan life changed when socialist, corrupt, golpista Hugo Chavez 